الحمد لله الحمد لله حدانا من هذا وما كنا من أحد ولا حرام الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله ويوم الآخر يوفرون من حاب الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو أخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وليذا تؤمنوا من منهم ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا أن أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون صدق الله تعالى وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قال هم الإسلام لا خمس حاجة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإكافة الصلاة وإكافة الزكاة وحاجة البيت وصوم رمضان صدق الرسول We give praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed praise and thanks be known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Alhamdulillah Subhanallah Allah wa ta'ala La hawla wa la quwata and understanding this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very pleased with us We praise and thank Him that He has guided us to this beautiful way the way of Al-Islam the way of those who have the goodness and enjoy the goodness of this world and also have the everlasting bliss and happiness of the Akhirah and will be saved from the fire. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has power over all things. My respected brothers and sisters, today inshallah, I wish that we reflect on some basic things, but more so things that are most important to us. Sometimes in the hurry and the hustle and the bustle of getting things done, we sometimes become forgetful. And it is a part of our nature to be forgetful. Mankind, we are forgetful generally. And so reminders are beneficial to us. So today, inshallah, I wish to reflect on such reminders that I pray and I hope that will benefit me and you as we prepare ourselves for Ramadan. And so we take a verse from Surah Mujahidah. This is Surah 58 and it is the last verse and we will reflect on a few parts of this verse, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day and this is most important for us. In the Lillahi wa Mita Ilayhi Rajibun This a very important point we should always try not to lose sight of. We should always try to 
bring this focus into our minds that we believe in Allah and the last day. And this means that there is serious accountability. So once we know that we have been watched, once we know that we have been documented, once we know that the evidence will be held either against us or for us, then it will keep us alert, inshallah. Thou will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day, loving those who resist Allah and His apostles. The surah dealt with more issues, but I want, inshallah, that we for now deal with my issue, your issue as a person, and try to understand or try to separate the issues right now. One of the difficulties we are having is that we are not able to separate the issues. We get the issues confused. For instance, as a passive example, sometimes we might have a quarrel or a misunderstanding or a disagreement, whatever you want to term it, with an individual on a particular matter. For instance, your mother or your Zaj would not like you to walk in the house with your shoes on. So that's the disagreement you have here. And so you disagree because you feel that you can and they say no that you cannot. So here there should be an agreement as to what should be the right action. Should we walk in the house with our shoe on or should we take it out at the door? Something will have to help us to make that decision, the guidance, and we will all have to agree on the source of that guidance. So let us focus our attention as to our personality and what this verse is saying to us, inshallah, in similar fashion. You will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day, loving those who resist Allah and his apostle. So the subject matter is Allah and his apostle. Even though such people who are their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the issue about Allah and his apostle, the people who believe in Allah on the last day, there is a very clear understanding. There is a very clear cut understanding as to what they stand for. They stand for Allah and His Apostles and in this case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad Rasulullah. So they stand here on the issue as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Apostle has agreed upon and they agree on that and they believe on that and they do not, they do not compromise, they would not love any person who disagrees with what Allah and His Apostle has set as the standard, even though these people are their fathers, or their sons, or their brothers, or their children. And we find in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very early, that the companions, especially when we look at the very early history, especially at Badr, this matter was made very clear. And even later on, that they did not compromise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rasul. They did not find in their hearts the love for anyone who opposed Allah and his rasul. So we could have stopped here for today and say, let us take this, these few days that are remaining for the rest of the time for Ramadan and let us underline, let us maybe take a pencil and a paper and begin to list the things whereby we should be standing up for Allah and the Rasul, meaning our conviction in our hearts, our thinking, 
our speaking and our doings should be in accordance with what Allah and His Rasul wants and we are not standing up for anything else. I want to see how far we are in this stage at this point of time. For the benefit of this, for those people who do not love, those people who oppose Allah and His Rasul, even though those people were their fathers or their sons and their brothers, and the relationship here, very close, blood relations. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam, blood relations are very serious matter. But here blood relations where Allah is also is concerned, there is no love in the heart for those who love Allah is also. For these people, they be opposed to Allah is also. And for such, Allah has written, Allah has written a man in their hearts. For such people who take such stand, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His barakat, His blessings, the reward He gives to such people, He writes a man in their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, for such he has written a man in their hearts and strengthened them. He gave them support. And he strengthens them. He supports them with a spirit from himself. He supports them with a spirit from himself. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was supported by Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he supplied the whole nation of those who were supporting him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this verse, if we stand up for Allah and his Rasul, and if anyone under any issue, under any guise, should oppose Allah and his Rasul, and even though those people are very dear and loving to us, but we find that we would not love them because of this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is going to write a man in our hearts, and He is going to give us the support from Himself, from a spirit from Himself, and He will admit them to gardens beneath which rivers flow, to dwell there forever, Allah will be pleased with them, and they will be pleased with Him, and they are the party of Allah. And truly, it is the party of Allah that will attain felicity. <laughs> Respected brothers and sisters, there are so many issues that straight away come to mind that I can highlight for you. But rather, sometimes, because of our weakness that we are not able to separate the issues. If I might highlight one issue that you might not be affected by, but you know someone who is affected by such a matter, then let us take an issue briefly. For example, we cannot have any look up to one another like the Salah, establishing the Salah. If you know someone who is not established in the Salah, sometimes in your heart you might feel a little bit high. You know, you're over that person. You have one over there. And that person will be the God. Rather, let us look in. If we are among those who have established the Salah, then let us look at those things that we are not doing. Ramadan is the Lord in which the Quran will be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we should fast in Ramadan. And Ramadan and the fast was also the people before us. They were also required to fast. In the narration of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only is the Quran revealed in Ramadan, he said the Sukhah for Ibrahim was revealed in Ramadan. Subject to correction in the first night of Ramadan. And the Torah was revealed on the third night of Ramadan. And the Injil was revealed on the seventh night of Ramadan. 
And this narration says the Quran is revealed on the 24th month of Ramadan. Respected brothers and sisters, let us not take up the issue, but let us take the point. The revelations before were all given in Ramadan, and the people before were all required to fast, and the fasting should have brought them to a stage taqwa. But we find, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to one companion some time after, when he was questioning the Prophet Sallallahu about the children, the Prophet was saying to save God, yeah, and to save God to be. And he was saying, well, would our deen have problem, seeing we have Quran, seeing we have the, the ulama among us, and they are teaching our children? And he said, and we should ponder and look. The people before us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches in Surah Fatiha, in Yana Sirat al Mustafi, Sirat al Dabina and Anta Alayhi, Rai al Mardubi Alayhi Maradarabi. There are people who Allah taught us or teaching us and we pray every day. Do not put us on the path of those upon whom your rock has been sent or on the path of those who have gone astray. And these people also, they have not revealed in Quran in Ramadan. Their revelation was given in Ramadan and also they had the opportunity of fasting also. And so they also could have been among the people of Taqwa. Yet, now we are praying the Quran for those people before us. Please, do not let your Lord descend upon us. For let us be among those who are straight. Respected brothers and sisters, we are very much what you might call childish, very playful. Sometimes we consider certain things in Islam as being minor, as being petty. We are sometimes allowing ourselves to trip because we say, man, this is not so important. And that is not so important. And I do not want to highlight them. They are tons of them. But I pray today, inshallah, that me and you, we can all sit for these few days and nights that remain. That we can all reflect, not on the person next door, not on our fathers and mothers and sons and wives. No. Let us all reflect on our own selves. And let us use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Muhammad Rasulullah, the Uswat al Hassan, the example. And let us see what he has done and the way he used to be And let us ask ourselves, am I resembling Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Basic simple things we can ask for us. Can I walk the world among strangers? Can you look at me, for instance, and say, Hey, that's a follower of Muhammad also. That's a man of Islam. Or that's a woman of Islam. Those are people who fear Allah. Are we like that? In our dealings, in our discussions, in our gatherings, in our affairs, in the way we do things, in every aspect of our lives, there is no simple matter in this land. There are no simple matter in this land. The responsibilities that we have, and again the responsibilities that we take, these are the things that will make us or break us. The wounds that we have, we definitely can't run away from them. And what are the basic ones that we have? First, that we have to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the heart. Because the feelings of the heart is not known to us. We have to express it. We have to express it. I was in saying if you would know a person, when one person was talking about another person and the character of that person, he said, you know that person? Did you spend time with him? Were you on a journey with him at any time? Did you have monetary dealings with him? 
Você volta. Você vem. Tá. You don't know me. The feelings of the heart, we know all about this. Because we know about the peace of Allah, we sell the hypocrites used to be in the devil. But they were basic signs. And those signs and the peace of Allah passed on to us. So we can examine ourselves. Do I have only three qualities of a hypocrite? Or do I have two? Or do I have one? And so I work on it. No, I don't have any of the qualities of a hypocrite. MashaAllah. Do I have the qualities of a person of any man? And so, based on this verse, I am checking my heart, my love for those around me, my love for the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for me. Is the heart, in Nitaimiya, I think he said, he said the heart, it attaches itself and it becomes a slave. That sometimes a man, he is the man of his house, but he loves his wife so much. He's dying in his love for her. So even though he is the master of his house, his heart becomes a slave to his wife. Whatever she wants, whatever she gets, whatever she pays, she wants, like that. So we have to look at our heart and see the cravings. I would not know that and you would not know that. Oh, we would not know each other. Even when we take our spouses, would the demands is the say now you say say the car will be designed with the sleep from the car. What we are saying it comes from the heart. You know you're saying it and your witness are there for you. So we are saying it and today again we have witness and we have testified Ashadun La Yahinallah wa Shadwan Mahmud Rasulullah. And the bottom of this testimony, based on all those verses saying that if we can make the effort that goes with that to know Allah, to know His Rasul, and to know why the Quran came in Ramadan, and the standards that have been set for us, and then we mirror or we take it like the, the chart that is going to be distributed. We have to take that chart and look at the timing so that we can subject ourselves to those signs, so that we can say, yes, I have passing today because I had my suhoor in time and I repeat my fast, my ikhah will be in time. And within that time, I stay away from food and drink and lies and backbiting and slandering and micro activities, whatever is restricted and the prohibitions of the period of time, so that. So now is the overall and then we look to our hearts. If a Muslim writes Iman on the hearts, then what happens? This heart would love. This heart would love Allah and His Rasul, and this heart, nothing will be able to stop it to obey Allah and His Rasul. And this is the measure that you and I have. Don't ask anybody any question, not that you would ask. What about your Iman? And about your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your willingness to obey the Rasul and your conviction that you are going to win from Ramadan well I should be saying to me I do not separate myself from that forgive me and the let us gain say to yourself honestly that you know what Iman has entered my heart and I have the barakah of Iman being with me in my heart by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have the spirit that Allah has promised so to me to give me strength to obey Allah in Joshua. If that is not the case, then Tawbah and Allah loves Tawbah. Tawbah, Tawbah, from now that when Ramadan will come. That his heart would have removed those overburdens, would have shed the garbage that has been offering it and that it will get excited. It will get excited with the presence of Ramadan. It will get excited with the advance of Ramadan. It will get excited with the Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised, He will forgive us and He will enter us into the Jannah, the everlasting home of happiness. Respected brothers and sisters, it is my opportunity and your opportunity 
Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to us. We have life and we have all the facilities of the world to make this happen. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acceptance and we pray His mercy and His forgiveness and His guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the full of you, loving you for you.